Hi, my name is Mr. Exum and welcome to my EdTech channel, where I show you how to get the most out of technology in the classroom. This video shows you how to use Microsoft Forms to make a quiz or an exam for your students. I will talk you through the formatting, the question types, adding images, and all the different sharing options. So let's get started. So to get to forms, you go to office.com and you'll probably be prompted to log in with your school details. And once you've logged in, you will get your different office apps. And here is the one we want. It's called forms. Now it's only works online. It only works in a browser. There is no forms application, desktop application. It's all browser based. And uh, essentially what you're going to want to do is to cre create a new quiz. Okay. Now the quiz editor is pretty simple to use. I think the first thing to do is to get your look of your form correct. What's quite nice is you can customize the look of this so we can brand it to be a bit more school based. So what I actually want to do is go to the theme button straight away. Now you've got different backgrounds here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the customize theme, the plus, and I'm going to upload a nice uh, school based background using the Im upload image button. And I'm going to not find one online, not find on my OneDrive, I've got this saved on my computer at the moment, on my desktop, here we are, there we go, and uh, the, this is also then the colour of the text and boxes, now that's blue, because it's picked that up matching the background, um, but actually I'm going to make that sort of more like red, there's quite a good one you can use, which is hash B and then all twos, and you get a nice kind of dark red, which complements it quite well. So you can find hex codes for all the different colours online really easily. So there we go, we've got a kind of background, we've got a theme, it looks quite school based. Okay, and now we can go back to the actual questions. Now we haven't got a title, so we're going to call this third form biology exam. And what you can do is you can add a, an image, okay, a title image. And again, we could search for something, maybe biological based, but actually might be quite nice to make this. Um, branded, so here we go, what's search for school third form exams, third form biology exam, summer term assessment. There we are. So our exam is set up and all we've got to do now is add our questions. So adding questions, as you'd imagine, is to click add new and you've got various choices, multiple choice, text, rating, dates, and then you click that, you've got a few other options down here. You can split your form up into sections, okay? So if you had different sort of topics or different areas you wanted to, you can subdivide your form up to, to give a bit of structure, but otherwise you just have a continuous one form. So we'll look at multiple choice first. That's pretty straightforward. You put your question in and your options below. Obviously you can add more options below and you can drag options around and you can give it a point. This is important. You've got to assign points. If it's just one mark answer, this one's going to give it one point. This is important because it's going to auto mark multiple choice questions. So it will assign how many points uh, you give it there for the correct answer. How do we decide which is the correct answer? Well, as you see, when I hover over this, I've got three boxes here that I, and I just choose the correct one with the little tick and that shows that one, will, it will mark that one as the correct answer. This allows you to give a message to the respondent once they select that in the feedback option and obviously that deletes it there. Uh, if there is, if the question says select all that apply, if there's multiple correct answers then you can switch that on and it will allow you to choose two that are correct for example and they have to pick both those two. Obviously this means that they are forced to answer the question, they will not be able to submit the form without answering that question. And do also look under the ellipsis here for more options. Shuffle options is very useful. So if you press that and I go back into it, you'll see it's now ticked. That will shuffle these options around for each student randomly. So they won't be able to memorize or tell anybody else, oh, it's option A, it's option B, which is helpful. You can, you can change it to a drop down box instead of a, a four in a row like this. And I'll talk about maths in a minute. So that should be relatively straightforward. However, sometimes you may want to add an image to a multiple choice question, okay? So how would we do that? Maybe we've got an exam paper, maybe we've got an, a graph or an image or a diagram that we want to use in our, in our questions here. So I'm gonna add another multiple choice question, okay? 
And this time I'm going to want to upload an image. First of all, I'm going to have to get that image, okay? How do I get an image or from an exam paper? Well, if I've got something like this, this is a pre biology paper in a PDF, and I think, oh, this is a good multiple choice question I want to use. How do I get convert that into an image? There's various ways, but I think probably the quickest way is to use the button down here in the bottom, which is the little pen button. And you click on that, and you do a, what's called a full screen snip. Okay, what that does is it takes a snapshot of the screen. I can use the crop button at the top to crop down the bit that I actually am interested in, and click tick. And then I'm going to click the save button to save that to my computer. Going back to my form, I'm now going to upload that question. Click on the little image button. You can add videos or images. Here's the image. Again, I can search uh, online. I can use OneDrive. Uh, if I've saved anything in my OneDrive account, it will link straight to that. Or I can upload it if it's saved locally on my computer. Here's that image I just downloaded. And okay, so here's my image. I'm going to put the question in here. And my options are simply going to be A, B. Now, at the moment, this is quite small, so you might need to use the edit little button here on an image. This gives you a few options. It's currently small. I can make it bigger by pressing that. Or if there's a particular part of the image I want to zoom in on, I can click the zoom button uh, to get a bit closer in to what I want. So that shows everything I need, actually, how it is like that. And when I'm ready, I can just click off that, and it will save that. Okay, uh, And I choose the correct answer. Now at any point if you want to check your form, you can click the preview button and this is what it will look like to students. Okay, Click back to get to the edit mode again. So that is multiple choice and adding images. The other one you're going to want to add probably is text. If you are add the text, you've got a short answer or long answer. Long answer will give them a whole paragraph to be able to fill in but it will not auto mark. If you do short answer, then it will auto mark. Okay, so here's my question. I can add the correct answer below. So if they type that in, they will get the correct answer uh, and it will automatically mark. Don't worry, you can double check that when you are marking their papers uh, and if you are willing to accept, for example, a slightly different spelling uh, or if, they, if you think, okay, they've, they've got the right answer, I'm actually going to give them that mark. You can override the auto marking on the on those short answer ones. But it is good can have to have that along with the multiple choice. Long answer, like I said, will give them a whole paragraph to be able to do. And on every question, you can add an image uh, or a video. You can copy questions very quickly and then just change uh, the wording or the options at the end. You can delete questions and you can quickly uh, change the order using the arrows. For those of you who are do, uh, doing maths or have maths uh, in, your, in your subject, then there is the option to add maths uh, equations into forms as well. So if I do add new and I do multiple choice, but this time I click this, uh, the ellipsis and I choose maths, I've now got a slightly different uh, form because I've got this uh, enter an equation option here. And when I click on that, I've got an equation created. Now this is this is quite advanced. You can build up quite complicated equations using the little editor here. So I've entered an equation. What's nice is it's actually automatically giving me some suggested results that I can add. So I'm going to add all those in there. And uh, it automatically knows which is the correct answer. It's worked it out for me. And if I if I then click add new, it will actually then it will actually also suggest further questions that I may want to add based on the same type of algebra that I've added up here. So I can add all those questions into my quiz very quickly there. So there is the math editor inbuilt to forms as well. Okay, so we've built a form. We've customized its look. We have entered the questions. You can add images, as I've said, short answer, long answer responses. And uh, now we need to make sure our settings are correct before we go any further. To do that, go up to the ellipsis at the top and choose settings. The first thing to do is make sure this is switched off. At the moment it says respondents will see their results and correct answers immediately after submitting the quiz. Now if students are doing it at different times, different time zones, you definitely don't want them finding out their answers or their scores straight away. We're going to switch that off. You, you as the, the teacher will uh, mark it and 
send push out the results to them at the relevant time. We obviously only want people within the school to do it and we want it to record the name and we only want them to have one response per person. We don't want them to be able to take this exam multiple times. Uh, you can enter a start date and an end date, quite useful, when this form is open. And you can shuffle all the questions in the form completely around so they can't say, well, what's the answer to question four, what's the answer to question three? Um, think carefully about that because obviously if your form has a structure to it uh, where the questions get harder or that or you know that kind of thing you won't necessarily want to do that but it is an option in there you can lock certain questions so you could lock cer certain area uh, you know the first half and then randomize the second half uh, but that option is in there there's a little thank you message you might want to customize that as to what they get after they've completed their form you may say thank you for filling it in and when they might hear about the results you've got some notification options here you don't want that ticked on because that will, what that will do is will give them a link to their aunt to their responses straight away. So we don't want that switched on, we want that switched off. So those settings are really if you are doing this for a sort of an exam style assessment. But let's say you're just doing a quick quiz in class or even uh, setting this as a revision task and you wanted them to do it over and over again. Then obviously you would choose different settings for those kinds of tasks. But those settings are important to make sure you've got those correct. Okay. So the form is finished, you're happy with the form, and you now need to share it. Uh, and that is all in the share button here. So we've got a few options here. Firstly, let's say you're sharing with other teachers. You're gonna want this share to collaborate. People in my organization can view and edit, and then it gives you a link that you can copy and paste, okay? So then you can send that to them in Teams or by email, uh, and you should both then have access over the form. Uh, and when ready to go, then it's going to be this, this link here, which is the one that uh, is the students are going to uh, need to be able to complete the form. Finally, be aware that all forms have the Microsoft Immersive Reader built in. So when the students view it, they have this little icon next to any text in the form, next to the question, uh, and they can click that and take them into the Immersive Reader. This is for students with dyslexia and other learning difficulties. Uh, it will do things like read out the form to them. One, what is the top layer? And they can change the colors. if They've got visual stress uh, and line focus, etc. And it does also have inbuilt translator in it, and it will translate the questions uh, and potential answers into up to any of these languages, and it will read them out in those languages as well. To get back to your forms at any point, just click on the forms button at the top left to take you back to all your forms and be aware of the shared with me. If anybody sent you that link, it'll pop up in the shared with me forms there. Another thing to mention is its integration with OneNote. If you're doing this as a revision quiz or a class test with the students, then you can integrate it directly into OneNote, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's say you are in OneNote and you've got a page and you want to add in a form that you've made. Very simple, you go to insert and you click on forms and it brings up a little whiz on the side which should link directly to all your forms that you've made already. You can still do a, long, a new form from here if you want or a new quiz from here if you want, but this is brilliant. You can pick that particular quiz and just click insert and it will put it straight into a OneNote page for you so that when the students are in their OneNote, it will automatically know who they are and log them in and they can complete that live within a OneNote page. Okay, so they've sat the exam and or the quiz and now you want to collect that data in and have a look at how they got on. I haven't had anybody take this exam, zero response. I'm gonna look at an old quiz that I made uh, previously where you can see it has 23 responses, doesn't it? So I can click on that and I'm back into the quiz editor here, but as you'll see at the top, I've got a tab called Responses, and it says 23. So what I get straight away is an average score, number of responses, whether the current form is active or not, and I get some nice charts for each of the questions. However, obviously I want to actually be able to go in and get marks for each individual student, and to do that, I'm gonna to need to go to Review Answers. In Review Answers, I now have each student in this drop down box at the top. I've got the time it took them to complete, which is quite useful, and I've got the points they got related to the auto graded answers. Now, all the multiple choice ones are auto graded. Now, you can see this one down at the bottom was a text short uh, 
short text box and I did have the correct answer programmed as antibodies. He's done antibodies. Now, that's not obviously spelt correctly, so it depends whether I'm going to penalise him for that. But if, let's say, I wanted to award that mark, I can then go in there and change that. It says need review, and I can put in that actually scored one on there. Okay, now it's gone up to 19 out of 25. So I can go through and I can mark the questions that need marking and accept the auto, auto uh, graded ones already. And then I can click on the next button to get to the next student. I can give feedback for each individual question if I want to. So potentially, especially on the long answer ones, if you've set any of those and you want to give specific feedback, you can do that there. If I go back, then I get back to here. And once that's all done, there's two things that are important. One is you can get all this data in Excel. What it does is it puts each question uh, in a column. It automatically shows you the start time and completion time. So you get the date and timestamp, who the student was and their total. Uh, and then you could filter by answers. Each response is a row. So then you can do some processing on that to get the data that you want out from the year group. And eventually, when you decide that it's the time to send out the results, uh, and you can click post scores, and what that will do is it will send them their score in an email, so they'll get their actual results. So there you go. A really simple form builder that you can use to make quizzes, polls, exit tickets, or even more significant types of assessment. I hope you found that useful, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon.